Welcome, everybody. My name is Andre Tilda. I'm Dean of the Faculty of Public Affairs, and, and thank you for joining us this morning. We have uh, with us three uh, FPA ambassadors. They'll explain to you a little bit what that means in their presentation to help you understand a bit more about be, what it means to be a Carleton student in a program offered by a unit of the Faculty of Public Affairs. So again, three students are here to talk about their experiences. So what I will, or one alum and two students, in what I will do is I will introduce our three speakers first and then turn it over and then uh, question and answer period later on. So first, may I introduce Taylor, who is a 2020 graduate of the Bachelor of Arts in Criminology and Criminal Justice with a concentration in psychology. And Taylor worked and helped uh, to, for the successful release of Ms. Mr. Suth Kamara, a Sri Lankan author and father who was arbitrarily detained for writing a children's novel that depicted the homosexuality. And Tori is a fourth year student also in the Bachelor of Arts in Criminology and Criminal Justice, but with a concentration in sociology. Taylor received a co curricular record star achievement in second year for adding nine positions to her record. And finally, Resda is a fourth year student in the Bachelor of Arts uh, with honors in law and a concentration in business law and a minor in business. She likes to sit in on random lectures for fun. So anyways, with, with that in mind, I'll pass it over to Taylor to get us started. Hi, I'm Taylor. Um, okay, so I just wanted to say that First of all, um, I chose to come to Carleton and this program because it's a very specialized and niche program that I think is only offered at very few schools in, in Canada. And um, I was very excited that this program was offered because um, it was something I was very interested in off the bat. But something that um, I did learn in my first year going into it is that it's not, it is the rigorous study of criminal, uh, criminology, it's criminal theory. You're learning um, a lot of theories and a lot, a lot of things that are applied in practice. And it's, I know some people are interested because it's really cool and sensationalized in news and, you know, TV shows and movies. But I think it's really important to emphasize that it is a lot of hard work. And although it can um, kind of like cross the line of being sometimes very um, sensationalized in, in media and like movies and what we're used to seeing in um, popular culture, we are doing the academic study of it. So you have to be prepared to um, take in a lot of uh, theory and a lot of knowledge and be able to uh, apply that into the real wor world. And I think that's the most important thing um, when, when graduating. Yeah. And then, um, so as was mentioned, I have, a, I had a lot of extracurricular activities that I uh, decided to join during my time at Carleton. Um, as someone who knows they would like to work with um, individuals, with people, um, I thought it was important to enhance my, um, but like my verbal skills, my interpersonal skills. So I joined the debating team and I, it was extremely helpful to just test you um, right away with being able to speak in front of people that you don't know and maybe on topics that you're not so informed of and you just kind of get over that nervousness that you have um you know like for oral speaking and public speaking and it helps you become very comfortable um and also it also increase um you know researching stuff in a short a short amount of time and then being able to present that in a very coherent manner as well so i would really emphasize joining any extracurriculars that are that you are that you find that would help you for your future career, or if you don't know yet, anything that's interesting for you, just anything to well, and anything to help you once you leave Carleton, because you will be working in, in the real world. So just always keep that in mind that all the, all the theories and knowledge that you're gonna be learning, like that the goal of that in the end is so you can apply that one day in the real world. Um, and then, Something I wish I knew when I started university is that um, at first you might it might seem like you don't know at much at all um, and you feel kind of 
very like relevant in the field as just a young student. But now that I've graduated, I've participated in so many like events and I've met so many people in my last year. I worked at the Ottawa Crown Attorney's Office for the entire year. That was my field placement that you can choose to do in your third or fourth year in criminology if you have good enough grades. So I suggest working hard enough so you are able to apply for these positions because it was the best decision I've ever made in my life, honestly. And I'm st I still keep in touch with my supervisor who is a Crown Prosecutor. And I just met with for coffee with her actually yesterday. And I still watch her court cases. I watched her superior court case through Zoom with her yesterday. Um, just there's a lot of things you can get involved in and don't be afraid to do it because like, this is really your opportunity to seize and capitalize on it. And the last thing I want to say was your professors are, well, I don't know if I was extremely lucky, but every professor I had at Carleton, I was inspired by and I had amazing relationships with. They're always there for you. They will always try and accommodate you the best to your needs. Just go to class and you know, re do your readings and be a good student and, and you will do well and you will succeed. One of my professors brought in an old student of hers and he mentioned how we did an internship in Washington, DC. And I asked him afterwards for the contact information because it really intrigued me. And I actually just called them up and asked them if I could uh, volunteer for them for the summer. And this was last summer. And they said, sure. And so I did an internship with them and I ended up um, work, working with a, a pro bono legal clinic in DC. And I authored allegation letters to the United Nations. And um, I learned how to like utilize United Nations treaty bodies and all these things. And that's how um, we ended up actually freeing uh, Mr. Dr. Kumara, who is from Sri Lanka. And all of this is because of a professor um, who was my law professor for criminal law. And she brought in her old student and I went up to him at the end and I asked for the contact information and I just called them up. And you have to do things like that and it will get you to really great places. So be motivated and you will succeed. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Is that okay? So Is Tori, good? Yeah, okay. Um, hi everyone, my name is Tori. I am a fourth year student now in criminology with a focus in SOCH. Um, I'm really excited for you guys to start your degree. Criminology has been awesome. I find it to be kind of a misfit degree in the sense that it's so broad that people go in for a whole bunch of different reasons. And sometimes they go in just to kind of get into university and see what they like, but you'll totally find your way. Uh, first year is a really fun and exciting time. So I'm super excited for you guys. Um, this is a super cool degree in the sense that we get to do so many things. You get to do law, soc, psych, and crim. Those are mandatory. And then you get to pick specificities. And I think that's so, so cool. Um, and some of the things that really, really opened um, my eyes in first year was uh, our Indigenous history and um, the hardship of minorities in sociology because I'm from a super, super small town in Ottawa. Like you blink and you're gone. Like if you're driving down, you blink, you're already past it. Um, and so I never, I was never taught about our indigenous history. And so sociology 1001 and 1002 just like blew my mind. And I'm sure there are going to be classes like that for you guys too, for whatever you're interested in. Definitely take uh, electives that, you know, uh, spark your interest. We have so many, they're really cool. Um, so for extracurricular activities, um, I, so I got the star CCR award because I, I added nine to my, uh, CCR. I did things like foot patrol. I, um, did PMC volunteering. It's a really easy way to volunteer if you're already uh, doing notes and, and making notes for your classes for yourself. It's really easy just to send them into. It's something to look, to look into. Um, but my favorite one was the Carleton University Criminology and Criminal Justice Society. So it's literally the society of our degree. Um, not like if you have friends in psych or law or anything like that, they can totally um, come into like it's an open society, but uh, it definitely 
paved the way for my degree, I would say. Like, I first year, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. And I saw this society and was like, okay, well, I guess I'll go into it. And um, through that, I've gotten so many volunteering experiences, so many, um, like, networking experiences, so many friends, all those kinds of things. I moved up from being a basic uh like member to them being director of volunteers and careers where I did four separate volunteering um, experiences for uh, people in criminology last year. And then this year I'm secretary um, and it's just absolutely amazing. So I would definitely look, tell you to look into that uh, because we have awesome volunteering positions. We, I don't know what it's gonna be like with COVID, but uh, we used to have panel events as well where I know people got jobs. I know people got volunteering experiences. Uh, we, it's, it was really cool. It was really, I got volunteering experiences from it as well. It was really cool. Um, and then one thing I wish I knew in first year, I had a really awesome fall orientation leader in first year. So she kind of set me up for like marks and field placement and now in my thesis. Um, but I wish I knew how to get involved better. Carlton has amazing volunteering experiences. There are little ones in the corners that if you don't pass by it, you'll never see it. Like one of my favorite ones has been Foot Patrol. Um, Foot Patrol does like safe walks and walk and talk and stuff for Carlton and uh, Uwadawa if you would like it. Um, students, uh, if they're not feeling safe or anything, it's patrol background. You learn all your 10 codes. I don't know if anyone's kind of in this for like uh, being a police officer or security or something like that, but volunteering with foot patrol is not only extremely easy, it's right on campus, especially if you're going to be there for um, like residency, but great shifts, great people. And like I said, like you get that experience that you can put on your resume of, I've already patrolled and I'm first year. I already know my 10 codes and I'm first year, which is crazy. It's really, really good. Um, and if you volunteer for things like Panda, I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but if you volunteer for things like that, not with COVID, but like in the next years, hopefully, um, that's a easy experience of working with people who are intoxicated or like medical stuff like that just really easy things to have on your resume and have a really good time at carlton and get you integrated into the carlton community as well um and the other thing i would ask you guys to do is meet with your profs so if your prof has an office hour please go i don't care if it was a question that you already know of um it helps so much with not only networking and knowing professors like taylor was saying like everything that she she got from the professors but i got my thesis professor from doing this and networking if you don't do that you're gonna find in fourth year if you want to do your thesis you're gonna have a lot of problems um because people have already networked people have already went to their off people to the profs that they like office hours introduced themselves been a familiar face um so if not the office hours then hopefully you know when you are back in school going up to them being like hi i'm you know whatever and i really like what you do i think we have overlapping um interests i might reach out to you later on for a thesis or like a master's if you think of doing a master's at carlton and stuff like that um but yeah it's something i wish i did a lot earlier and i found a lot of people doing catch up with third and fourth year so definitely meet with your profs it's always really really good for them to know your your name and your your face, but good luck. And I'm really excited for you guys because this degree is awesome. Carlton is awesome and you're gonna be awesome. Yeah, so hi everyone. My name is Rezda and I'm in my fourth year of business law. And honestly, it couldn't have been like the worst timing to end your uh, degree because now you can go to all of your favorite spots and say proper um, goodbyes to them. Um, but anyway, so um, why did I choose business law? Well, um, honestly, um, going in, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And um, so um, I may have been in the middle of like watching suits while I was choosing programs. And so I was like, you know what? Business law sounds great. Um, but then of course, like I did a follow up research on it and I was really intrigued with um, with just how like the law works um, because um, obviously like they help um, 
sort of uh, like structurize um, our society. And because we're always surrounded by business everywhere, I just thought um, they would make a really nice uh, complement with each other. And so I thought, you know, why not? And then if I don't like it, um, it's super easy to like change over. Um, and so, um, but of course, because I am graduating in um, business law, so it means that I really enjoyed the program. Um, and so uh, what I learned, um, like going through my degree is that like in your first year is really um, the best um, sort of a place to sort of uh, test out different courses, um, but also like different activities around campus. Um, so uh, in regards to the degree, um, if you are going into a law program in your first year, you only have to do uh, one mandatory course, which is uh, LAWS 1001 um, and LAWS 1002, but they're actually um, the same uh, basically part one and part two of like the same course and so um, everything else is electives and so you can really sort of branch out um, if you think that um, you're into psychology you can try them out um, if you think you're um, into um, African studies you can try that out either like there's a lot of like different um, like courses that you can try. So that's that's really nice because then um, in the end it can sort of help uh, formulate um, a concentration for you or um, even a minor if you decided to go into one. Um, but yeah, so um, what uh, sort of I learned um, from like uh, my degree is that um, like start planning from day one. Um, I know that a lot of people say um, that first year is a time to sort of uh, relax. Um, and honestly, you can do that, but like it won't maximize your uh, potentials to achieving your goals. Um, and so, uh, for example, like a lot of the courses in your last year, uh, you probably want to um, like do them, but um, once you get into your last year, you find out that like you didn't meet the prerequisites. And so um, it's really good to have everything set out um, in like your first year. You could even like um, do what I do and then sort of just make um, a list of like all the courses I would take throughout my whole uh, four years. And so that'll sort of help um, um, sort of like um, uh, keep you on track with everything and make sure that you are following um, your objectives. Um, so yeah, so that's really, um, so that's really uh, um, like what I wanted you guys uh, first to like know from all this. Um, and then um, also like what Taylor and Tori have mentioned, um, always be involved. Um, I know that like first year I learned that it's super easy to either um, like not be involved at all or be too involved. And uh, so I want you to guys to sort of like um, be in the middle. So um, don't be, uh, don't just go to your courses and then go home and then that's it. Um, but actually try to reach out and like try to be involved with um, uh, things because of course um, it'll, it'll make your university experience um, more fun. Um, for example, like um, every year I would like to go to uh, the different um, expo, uh, like um, expo, um, presentation that um, event that happens like in the beginning of the year. Um, it basically uh, shows uh, up, like present all like different clubs and societies um, on campus that's available. And so you can try um, a lot of them out. Uh, but of course, like this year with everything um, being online, uh, that will be a lot harder. But um, I'm sure that like um, Carlton will find like a way to sort of um, reach out to students and then show them all the different opportunities that's available. So, um, but if not, you could always uh, try again next year when um, everything to hopefully open up um, and so yeah again like it's really easy to not be involved at all or be too involved which is uh, me um, I would I think I got um, carried away and was like involved in everything um, but I think that sort of helps narrow down what I like and what I don't like and so um, being too involved is better than not being involved at all um, and sort of from that um, I was able to, um, to like sort of narrow down what I want to volunteer in and just sort of focus on that and like build report and like um, relationships with like the different people I volunteer with um, and uh, honestly uh, one of my favorite um, like extracurriculars that I do that I volunteer for is being an FPA um, ambassador and I'm not being biased because I am one um, I really did learn a lot from it 
um, like I grew as a person. Um, before, um, I was a really a shy and introverted person. The idea of just socializing or um, public speaking scares me. I'd be like, no, no, thank you. Um, but I thought, you know what? Um, like if I don't start getting out of my comfort zone now, then when when will I do that? So why not do it now? So that's what I did. I, I signed up. Um, it was really um, nerve wracking at first, but honestly, you'll just get um, like used to it. And so from um, being an ambassador, I learned um, a lot of things. I learned about like the different researches and ideas that our faculty members and students um, are doing. And that really helps me with like my papers um, and also uh, to sort of hone in on like what I'm interested in. Um, and also I learned a lot of um, how to network. Um, like networking does sound um like scary at first because like what do you do do you just like go up to a person like what do you talk about and stuff like that but honestly if you're really interested in what they do um and you really want to know more um, from them um like networking is great and the events that i volunteer for um we get uh, people from all different types of backgrounds and so i was able to ask um like uh, law uh business lawyers i was able to ask like um criminal uh, prosecutors and and, um, like even profs from um, like different uh, countries about like what they think of like a particular research um, like topic is and so um, and also um, you can uh, learn a lot of like different opportunities that's, that's available from them too um, and so yeah it's like it's really great it's like all these like soft skills and experiences that you learn in your undergrad grad can really um like spill over to um after undergrad into your workplace or um whatever uh, path you decided to take afterwards so definitely my advice would um like be to get involved like um like you never know like um without um me volunteering for the um carlton university research research opportunity program i wouldn't have known about it and um i wouldn't have been able to enter um and actually like win the competition um and then uh because uh, from that uh competition now i am more prepared on um what to do like how to go about with like my honors paper and also um because like you need a supervisor for that um i was able uh to get some uh, get a prof to supervise uh, with me and now um, he's also willing to uh, supervise for my honors um, paper which again as Tori I've mentioned is really hard to do because they can only take so many people and so it's really it's really just um, great to like uh, get out of your comfort zone and sort of just um, just learn uh, more about you like university is just not about like learning what um, you want to go into for your careers but also just to like know about like who you are and like what you like to do uh, besides um, studying and so yeah so definitely um, get out there and um, I hope that even though everything is online this year I hope you'll make uh, the best of it and also hopefully next year when we do resume that um, you'll be able to sort of um, experience Carl Carlton to like the fullest so thank you so much thank you so much to Taylor Tori and Resta for sharing your experiences uh, the chat for everybody is now open to questions. I'd like to mention too that if you have any questions that are specific to getting into a course or switching around courses or minors or majors, uh, it's best to talk to an academic advisor for questions such as these. So you can go on to carlton.ca and uh, get an online appointment with an academic advisor. It's best to meet with them once a semester, at least once a year. Um, they will help you keep on track and get what you're looking for, as well as ensure that you graduate on time. So we can answer general questions based on experiences and opinions. So anybody who wants to either unmute their mic and ask the question, either to one ambassador or all three, um, or if you want to put them in the chat, you can do so now. While we are waiting for the first few questions to come in, I have uh, a question to pose to our ambassadors. How did you find the workload in person versus online? Were you asking us that? Yep. Okay. Um, <laughs> I had because I had a few online courses. Um, so the workload I find can be very comparable. 
I find that staying on top of it is very different. I think that when you have a class that you kind of have to be there for and you're already on campus, I found I got my readings done because I'd just be like, well, I'll just go to Roosters and eat some lunch and read my readings or start my paper or ask questions when it's in person. Whereas when you're on online and on your own, it's all on you. And it's a little bit harder with with good motivation and good time management skills. It's definitely it's fine. Some people actually really would rather that it be on your own, not be sitting in a lecture for three hours. Some people love it. Um, I don't mind it. it depends on the course. Right. But I find the workload comparable, but how to do it and kind of the time management of that can be a little bit different. Yeah, I wanted to add just to reiterate what Tori said. Um, I agree with the workload, just you have to make sure that you're essentially following a schedule. I mean, it doesn't have to be the same schedule as it is would be um, in person lecture. The whole point of online is that it's flexible environment, but it's not so it's a free for all. If you do not stay on top of your classes, you will end up watching um, hours of lectures and it will be extremely overwhelming and it will seem like as if there's a lot to catch up on make sure you watch your lecture like at least the day of or as soon as you start like um having like multiple lectures to watch like even two like lectures to watch is a is a lot and it's over it can feel overwhelming but if you just stay on track like as if you were to attend class um it's essentially the same all it is is just changing the environment you just have to make sure to keep on track of your things that's it it'll be yeah. good yeah and to add on to that and honestly they both have their own like um like pros and cons like for example with um actual lectures you actually have to get yourself there and you do it like um you're not putting things off like um they have like the schedules there for you um and you can also like interact with like the prof there um mm -hmm. instead of like typing it up or like emailing them afterwards you're actually there in the moment um and with um online the benefit is that you can sort of everything like you have more time to do everything like you don't have the commuting you don't have um all that um sort of stuff and so you can sort of um work on different courses all at like the same time and like sort of meet your own time so let's say um an 8 30 uh, lecture you don't actually have to do it at 8 30 in the morning um and so if you're a night owl you can uh, focus better and you can focus better at night you can just do your courses then and so like they both have their own pros and cons it's really about like um like taylor said like the key is um like time management and sort of planning your courses wisely and not getting um, too overloaded um, and putting them off until the end. Very well said. Thank you, guys. Uh, so also Tori mentioned uh, she would be reading at Roosters. So Roosters, I put in the chat, is a student-run cafe that is on campus. Uh, so that's what she meant there. Uh, Camilla asked, how do I utilize office hours since the first semester is online? And Dean Andre has answered with office hours will be held online as well. So these office hours will be in the course outlines with the days and times for the online office hours. Those outlines will be released online on C-Learn near the end of September, or sorry, end of August, early September. Uh, Christy has asked, is there a co-op program for criminology students? Uh, actually, Dean Andre has answered that as well in the chat. In the criminology program, there's a placement with an outside organization that is available. Not everyone can get a placement, though, but there is no co-op program available. So I hope that answered your question, Christy. Um, I also answered as well because I did the of course. placement, which is similar oh, great. to the co-op program. Um, I guess in a sense, well, you get credits for it, so you can choose to do it for a full year or half a year, and that will either give you a full credit or half a credit. And you essentially work for uh, a certain amount of hours, let's say like eight hours per week, and that is like you would be going to class, and at the end you get a cr you get that credit, um, and it's in replacement of a class you're doing a practical uh, experience. You're working in an organization. It could be um, people have chosen to work with the RCMP, people have chosen to work with the correctional facilities. Um, I chose to work with uh, the Ottawa Crown Attorney's Office, um, but as uh, um, it was mentioned, not everyone can get placements, so make sure you um, have good grades and 
you are aware that this is open because it's a really, a really, really, really great experience. I really highly recommend doing it. It like really just was the cherry on top to my last year at Carlton and um, enhanced my CV a lot. And yeah, and now I'm going to law school because of it as well. So. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. Starter. Uh, so we also had a question from Abigail asking what Taylor's concentration was. Uh, concentration was psychology, so that was also answered. So Alexander asks, do you think it's best to not work the first semester you arrive on campus, regardless when that is, since it's important to make friends first? Ooh. Um, I can, I worked every year of a uh, university, um, so I can say my experience if you'd like. Um, I think that it is definitely your comfort zone. Um, so like if you're finding that classes are really, really hard and you need to focus on your academics, I don't know your situation, you know, like money wise, but if you can not work and maybe focus more on school, you know, a big part on school or make friends, volunteer, do um, clubs and societies to make friends, um, maybe, maybe like focus on that, make sure to put yourself, your mental health, stuff like that first, because school is a lot on its own. It's a full-time job. You're, you're doing school. Um, but like I worked every year of university, some years I worked two jobs. Uh, so can it work? Absolutely. Um, but like some of the jobs were a little easier to work school around. I did overnights for some of them. I got to do homework on some of them, stuff like that. It depends for me. Oh, thank you, Tori. Um, yeah, uh, and, oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Resta. <laughs> and just to add on, like, I also didn't do, um, like, I don't have, I didn't have any jobs, like, in my first year, and then I started working in my second, third, and fourth, and um, honestly, again, like Tori said, it really depends on, like, if you think you um, are financially able to sustain yourself for the first year without work, um, and if you are, then, yeah, definitely take the time to sort of, um, like, get to familiar yourself with, like, campus and, like, your degree and, like, know, um, what is like your limit on like uh, course wise and um, everything and then like just have like have fun in your first year explore um, and then once you actually find your groove then in second third and fourth year you can sort of incorporate work into your um, life. Perfect well said uh, so just a note we do have seven minutes remaining and we have a few questions in the chat so uh, we're going to try to get to everyone's questions but if not I'll let you know what you can do at the end. So Alex has, how do you guys feel about the criminology department cutting ties with policing and prison field placements? For me, in my opinion, my answer would be longer than seven minutes, so I will <laughs> back out. It's totally acceptable too if you don't have. Uh, this is a pretty intense question. So uh, what, what we can do uh, for Alex is that, uh, Alex, uh, my name's Stephanie. I sent you the invite for this Zoom call. You can send me your question and I can pass it to the ambassadors and you guys can have a discussion after the fact as well. Uh, so Abigail asks, is there a big difference between the law program and the criminology and criminal justice program? Honestly, um, looking at like uh, the calendars and also talking with my friends, um, in your first year, there's not really a lot of uh, differences. We're taking all the same courses. Like I, um, like you all have to like take a laws 1000 and um, sociology courses, uh, psychology. I also took criminology 1000. And so in first year, it, there's definitely a lot of overlap. So if you, um, let's say you're in law and then you took um, like criminology and um, in, in law, like in the law, 1000 you'll also be learning a lot about like criminal law and then if you found that like oh um, criminology and criminal justice um, suits better for you it's really easy to switch out in your first year so um, that's an option fantastic uh, so Selma has also asked what kind of marks do you need to get a placement I think it's just an overall average of a B plus to be able to apply However, the higher your grades, 
the better I believe your chances are getting in because they do look through um, everyone's like application, I guess, separately yeah. individually. Yeah, yeah that would be generally the case. And then an academic advisor would also be able to tell you exactly what the cutoff is, but always good to be higher. <laughs> Tori, what were you going to say then? Yeah, I was just going to say that it, uh, from Danette, uh, who runs the field placement, she says it changes every year. It depends on the averages and stuff like that. Um, and then, yeah, you don't get paid for those placements for the other question in it. It's all you free. Get a, you get, yeah, a you get a credit. Perfect. Thank you. That's great. So uh, instead of getting paid, you would get credit for that placement. How do you manage time with taking part in different clubs? That's a great question. For me, I took clubs that I liked. They weren't like work for me. They were ones that those would be kind of not my me time, but those would be my social times. I would go to clubs that I like the people of and this, the atmospheres of, and I would enjoy that. And that would be like my kind of cool down from school. Um, obviously, you can be in clubs that aren't exactly like that uh, for other reasons, but it's definitely hard if you don't enjoy the things that you're spending most of your time in. So uh, yeah, management would be like cutting out kind of social time separate, um, like separate social time and integrating that time into the clubs that you're doing or the volunteering you're doing, really enjoying them so that uh, you add that time. Yeah, and also like a lot of the um, clubs and societies, uh, they do post like their events like after um, like school hours, so it'll be easier for you. So as long as you are able to sort of um, make time for it afterwards and um, stick to your schedule, you'd be able to like fit it all in. Fantastic. So we had another question in the chat from Beatrice. Are any of you planning on applying to law school and what is the process like? So Taylor has answered that in the chat to Beatrice. I'm yes. attending law school this September, so if you would like to discuss, fee, yes, please feel free. Enough time, but I can just quickly say it, it depends if you want to obviously stay in Canada and uh, the States and then the UK, there's, all, there's different things, but you would have to uh, study for the LSAT. You have to have uh, an undergraduate degree um, in any, any field, doesn't matter. You can apply to law school with any undergraduate degree. Um, but you would need to study for the LSAT, which um, I would say is for certain people, it depends um, how you are good at testing and speed processing, but it is a test that you have to study for and learn about. It's not like content wise, it's more learning how to, uh, it's basically learning the test and the method, methodology of the test, but it's definitely doable and um, you can apply to essentially a bunch of schools through like kind of one um, portal that you get. So it's not too complicated. Um, there's also a, ways to, a few ways to bypass the LSAT, but I can discuss that as well um, more in detail if you wanna email me. There's a, a lot more I could say on this because um, I also did apply to schools in the UK as well. Um, so yeah, if you wanna email me or we can discuss this more. I don't know if there's a lot of time left if anyone else wants to ask questions. About there's uh, two more questions in the chat. One uh, I can answer quickly because it was asked earlier and then the other I'll ask to our ambassadors. So the first one is about taking a year off school and how the workload has changed. So the workload will stay about the same as it was in person versus online. It's just the mechanisms are different um, and there are pros and cons to both. And then our final question for the day to the ambassadors is from Michelle. How can you take the most advantage in your first year in making connections and networking? Maybe, um, hmm. I think there's a lot of ways. And I think actually each of us have, though there we kind of have done the same things, but I think we've all gotten to them in different ways. Um, but maybe like, just being open, you know, like, like going into, a, well, gosh, I guess it's online now. I was going to say go into a lecture and say hi to your neighbors, but okay. Um, so I guess that's not there anymore, but like, but yeah, like see what Carlton has, like, um, gosh, be part of clubs, like, uh, but take time for yourself and, uh, 
yeah, I hope that at one point there will still be that social aspect of university really badly because everything I'm thinking of is like residence, like go to like things that are around, go to Black Squirrel that's not just off bank, like I don't know, but but try try to be part of a clubs and stuff and you'll you'll meet even if it's over Zoom, you know. Yeah, also don't be afraid to just like for example like call places for volunteer if you're interested in the volunteering. Um, or even emailing, just don't be afraid to just email someone and, and say you're interested and like you, you're, you're interested in doing, you know, whatever they have to offer during this time, you, there's still many ways to help people and, and, uh, you know, organizations online. Um, in my first year at Carleton, I, I'm from Montreal and I did not know anyone and I, and I was very interested in, um, like meeting people. So I joined clubs at Carleton, but I was also interested in volunteering with um, individuals who had been recently released from prison. So I literally went on Google and typed that in on Google in the Ottawa area. And I called maybe three different numbers that were open to vol uh, volunteer for students who hadn't completed a grad uh, their undergraduate degree yet. And one uh, answer, and I became a volunteer and I worked there for three years. I volunteered there for three years, literally just by calling. I had no idea, you know, who they were or anything. And I just read about them online and I just, you know, you can do it like that. And now it's um, moved to Zoom as well. And, you know, you're, there's still ways to, don't be discouraged that things are now online. There's still ways to participate and do things. You're just changing the form. It's not like that everything else should be the same. It's just, they're just changing the environment and it's scary, but it, don't be afraid to just like email or call someone and be like, I'm really interested in doing this. Like, how can I help? How can I help your organization? How can I help? The club just yeah and also like um through us um what i found is that like if you follow like carlton like on social media especially on facebook like kusa and like the student experience office they would post like a, like random events there and then you'll get notified and so like if you just want to um, make connection with like new people um it doesn't have to be through like clubs or, or societies you can just join some random activities and then you'll meet people there too so yeah and even just today, you've already met so many other people. <laughs> so it's always good to reach out. Thank you so much again to our three ambassadors uh, for helping us today. Really appreciate it. Again, if anybody has any more questions and needs to reach out, feel free to reach out to me, Stephanie Boss. I sent you the Zoom invitation and I can either help you with your questions or pass them on to our ambassadors that were here today and then they can connect with you. And I just wanted to wish you all the best of luck in the upcoming academic year. Thank you very much to Stephanie and to again to our three ambassadors for, for being here today. And thank you to all of you for joining us. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye. Bye, everybody.